Hello everyone um, and thank you very much to Rachel, Ian, Marion and everyone who's taken the time out today to put on the second online Autistic Pride event. Um, I'm Sarah McCulloch and I'm the director of the Autistic Empire. The Autistic Empire is an autistic social organisation built by and for autistic adults to form community based on autism as a civic identity and to provide practical tools and services for all autistic people. You can enrol as a citizen and help build a community of autistic adults, creating a better world centred on our experiences as autistic people. We were founded in 2018 and are open to all autistic adults and we have citizens all over the world. We do research, put on events and try to create things autistic people need and like. We support autistic culture, autistic history and autistic identity. I personally realised I was autistic when I was 19 in 2008. One of the things that I was often accused of uh, when I started out on my autistic journey, and indeed that I'm accused of now, is, oh, you just think that everyone is autistic. And it's true, I think a lot of people are autistic, but what I've come to realise in the last 12 years is that a lot of people are autistic, especially my friends. It turns out that autistic people like hanging out with each other, even if we have no idea that we're autistic. Everything in my life made more sense once I realised that I was autistic. I got to normalise things that stressed me out and make decisions and be clear in myself about what I could and couldn't do. It makes sense to me, for example, um, that I flip out when people cancel on me. If you cancel on me without a good reason, I will treat that as a resignation letter for our relationship and will most likely accept it. It's not something that I really have any control over and this cost me a lot of people, but you know what? I am content with that. It's who I am as a person. The people who are in my life get that showing up is something that's very important to me, and they show up. I am much happier for not pretending that I'm someone that I'm not, and not caring about things that I don't care about. I don't want to be neurotypical, any more than I want to be straight. They can't fix their own printers. They don't like facts. They, don't, they insist on wearing certain clothes because they saw the Duchess of Cambridge wearing them. Neurotypical people are really weird. I wrote an article uh, for a now defunct website in 2012 about the reality of life as an autistic person that I'd uh, like to read an extract from. Imagine you've gone to a different country, one where people who speak your language but the way they live their lives is completely different to how you do it. Any time you ask someone a question, like what sort of currency they use or what public transport is available, they look at you like you're crazy and tell you that you should already know. Worse, every so often, others will tease you and point you out to other people as someone who doesn't get the simplest things. Angry, frustrated and confused, you give up asking questions and try to avoid having to speak to anyone about things you don't understand. You try to work out what's going on by watching the other people around you and trying to copy what you see for the duration of your stay. Now imagine that you are autistic, that that country is your society and the duration of your stay is the rest of your life. That is the reality for autistic people. I'm now a decade older since I wrote that and the world is a lot less confusing to me than it used to be. That's partially because I grew up and learned what I needed to know, but it's also because I built a social network of people who think and act like me and didn't know either. I found my people. And what I hate more than anything is the sheer number of autistic people for whom the world is still like that, where everything just seems loud and overwhelming and confusing and they have no way out because they don't know who they are or who to turn to. In the 12 years since I realised I was autistic, a great deal has changed. When I started out, it was Aspies for Freedom, Temple Grandin and Autscape. I'd never heard of Autistic Pride. When I started Audible Autism, our podcast, I could only find one other autistic podcast which existed, which had started a month before we put out our first episode. There's been a real explosion in the number of groups and campaigns and autistic activists who are out there, and the advocacy movement now has real teeth. We also have... The flip side of greater public awareness. Children get called autistic in the playground, people tell me that they think that they might be a bit autistic because they made a, a faux pas. It's offensive, but it's only possible because people have an idea of what autism is. It, it's not a good idea, but it's a good start. We've got Pablo, Edo Kedar and the Autism Act. Damien Milton defines the double empathy problem of autism in 2012 where the struggle of autistic people to understand what is going on with neurotypical people is mirrored by the inability of neurotypical people to understand autistic people. There's been real efforts to bridge that gap and we've got books, films and famous autistic people all talking about being autistic. 
Many of the big autistic charities that were started by parents for their children have started to consult with autistic people and there's started to be a real shift in the way that they've um, done things. But the problem I have with nearly all of these discussions is that they still talk about autistic people as a group of people who are over there. We're still treated like aliens that you can spot coming from a mile off and professionals or a class of neurotypical people who should know better. The idea that you could be autistic and a doctor isn't part of that conversation. The reality is that I've met autistic teachers, I've met autistic therapists, autistic doctors and autistic psychologists. Autistic people walk among them in all streets of life and at all levels and are represented in the professions that work with autistic people. They just haven't noticed. I am an occupational therapist and I currently work as the deputy manager of a community mental health team and before that I was the senior occupational therapist in a school for autistic children. One thing I've always found is a real us versus them attitude. We have an autistic person come in and it's always medical model, discussion of support and treatment, their autism. I would go to work in the autistic school and have people say to me, oh, they don't think like we do. Well, they think like I do. I had to write to someone who had taken minutes of a meeting that I'd attended to ask them to remove seven references to clients suffering from autism. The idea that I, an autistic healthcare professional who's actually senior to that person, might have been sitting in the same room the entire time listening to them about how tragic it was to be autistic evidently hadn't even registered. It's impossible for people to have a meaningful discussion about autistic life with all the highs and lows if they only talk about the subgroup of people who they pathologise as having a communication disability. You can't talk about the autistic inner world if the only people permitted to describe it are regarded as other to you and as people who are not you. Partly that's because it's harmful to imagine that autistic people are all disempowered children, but also, and most significantly, because it's impossible to imagine an autistic person who might be you. I found a lot of people who are clearly autistic to me, who have autistic people in their families, who will deny that they're autistic because their cousin or their nephew is autistic and he has real problems. It's always a he. There's a sense that autistic people are all unemployed, socially isolated and dependent on other people to shape their lives and if that doesn't apply to you then calling yourself autistic amounts to appropriation. A friend of mine uh, posted an interview that I did for an OT podcast about being an autistic therapist and someone we both know had a massive argument with her in the comments about how offensive it was for autistic adults like me to suck up all the resources when his son needed them more. This man is obviously autistic if you've ever met him and I wonder how he would treat his son differently if he saw himself in him instead of seeing his autism as some kind of extrinsic burden to be managed extrinsic burden to be managed and treated this is problematic uh, because it means that half our community is sleepwalking through their lives with no idea of what's wrong or why they feel alienated from the people around them they'll just say things like oh i, I don't like people um, to explain many of the ways that they behave it means that we have substantial numbers of people who deny that they are autistic but have an affinity for autistic people so they get involved in the autistic community and autistic advocacy from the perspective of supporting autistic people when really they're just promoting internalized neurotypical ideas about who we are and what we do which is damaging to them as well as us. We talk in the autistic community about presuming competence. The idea that you can assume that someone can do something until they demonstrate that they are unable to do. But I'd like to suggest that we come up with a different paradigm uh, or a related paradigm. What if we presumed autism? What if we spoke and acted as if every person in front of us was autistic until they demonstrated otherwise? When Sia, who is a a uh, music artist, released music, um, a musical about a non-verbal autistic girl this year. She was very heavily criticised for a portrayal that was clunky at best and grossly offensive to many. Sia did not respond well to this criticism and had a number of hostile exchanges on Twitter about the casting process and the artistic choices of the film before conceding that some had made good points and editing the film to remove some of the distressing depictions. Now, I followed this all along and didn't comment publicly uh, because there's two ways of looking at this. The first is the majority narrative. 
that Sia had no business making a film about autistic people when she hadn't consulted autistic people about what should be in it, that it was a patronising and infantilising view of disabled people, that Hollywood had made another film for inspirational disadvantage um, and an attempt to cash in on the backs of autistic people as pity parties for neuro people, neurotypical people to learn something from. I quote, the way she has spoken about her film and music's condition shows that she has a warped view about autism. Her steadfast refusal to call autism a disability and preference for the euphemistic neuroatypical and on the spectrum is troubling. It demonstrates a refusal to engage with a community who has been reclaiming words like disabled and autistic as part of their identity and a denial of the difficulties autistic people can face in their daily lives. Quoting Sia, I've never refused referred to music as disabled. Special abilities are what I've always said." Close quote. May sound like an attempt not to stigmatise her protagonist, but by cloaking autism in euphemisms and attempts to distract from the challenges it poses, she erases both the existence of autistic people without so-called special abilities and those who have suffered because of their disability. Now, this quote is from a review that was published in the Oxford Student by someone who identifies as autistic. What I found interesting about it <clears throat> is that it seems to be arguing for a frame of reference where all autistic people are disabled, the autistic spectrum is just a euphemism, and if Sia had just spoken to some autistic people, she would have known this and made a different film. But if she'd spoken to me, I would have affirmed that autism isn't inherently a disability. I don't regard myself as disabled because I'm an autistic person. I do regard uh, the autistic spectrum um, as a reality um, and a meaningful description of our experience um, and that is reflected in the medical uh, term autistic spectrum disorder um, and I certainly wouldn't have used the term condition to describe either myself or anyone else who's autistic. So who's right? The contradictory messages that we're sending out as a community about how we talk about ourselves and the language we use for our experiences is an active barrier we face in the struggle for autistic acceptance. We are ourselves often trapped in ways of thinking about autistic people as having Asperger's or living with a neurodevelopmental condition. We are not ill. We've been put in this position by a society that developed this framework and language whilst groping around in the dark about what it really means to be autistic drawn from a small subsample of autistic people that they had access to. And it's on us, the entire autistic community, to break out of it. So that was the majority narrative um, of the film. But what I would like to suggest is, what if we shifted our perception and saw Sia as an autistic person who felt some kind of kinship with the identified autistic people in her life and made a film about being autistic that reflected all of the contradictory, medicalised, pathological framing and languages that professionals use about us and autistic people often use about themselves and then had a meltdown when publicly criticised for it. How would we have treated her then? How differently would we treat parents who make appalling statements about their autistic children if we presumed that they were autistic. Autism is genetic, their kids got it from somewhere. Chances are quite likely that one or both parents were autistic, which we can also gather from the huge numbers of people um, who are realising that they're autistic in their 30s, 40s, 50s as a result of their children being diagnosed. How many angry conversations on social media could be averted if we approach them as if we were talking to an unident unidentified autistic person with internalised aspiphobia and a mess of conflicting ideas about what autism is that's based on what they read. Now, I, I, I say this, I don't want to say that Sia definitely is or is not autistic because I've never met her. But it is clear to me that many of the people who take an interest in being autistic are autistic themselves. And I want us as a community to challenge people who say, oh, I'm bit autistic or I'm not autistic but I really like autistic people or uh, presume to speak on our behalf to ask themselves why they think they know us so well and whether the reason that they like us so much is because they are us. Maybe we have something to teach them about themselves and we need their knowledge, we need their voice, we need their experience and we need their money and they need their people. 
one of the most powerful ways in which LGBT people have liberated ourselves in the last 50 years is by coming out and living our lives openly as LGBT people. Uh, when I was newly out as a teenager, I once found a sticker on the back of a toilet door that said, every day you wake up alive and relatively happy, you are committing a rebellious act. You, as an alive and functioning queer, are revolutionary. It was very powerful to me as a baby queer, um, who still had long hair, um, and I still broke out in a cold sweat every time I told someone that I was LGBT. That quote um, is actually from a manifesto that was published by ACT UP in the 1980s, when it truly was revolutionary to exist as an LGBT person in America. Uh, the, <laughs> The, the World Health Organization only removed being gay as a mental disorder um, in 1992, which is in my lifetime. It's absolutely ridiculous. The biggest shift in public perception of LGBT people and the rise in public support for our rights was as a result of ordinary people, their brothers, their mothers, their siblings, their scout leaders and their priests, all coming out and saying, this is me, I'm one of them. It prompted so many people, seeing gay people getting on with their lives, to realise that actually this wasn't so bad. Now, we get to have arguments about whether Facebook should be sending contingents to Pride and Starbucks should be painting their logo in rainbow colours. What I find extraordinary um, about this uh, public discourse is just how far we've come. That we're even having this conversation um, you know, six years after same-sex marriage was legalised in my country. It, un it underlines how powerful and how effective living your life openly and in public has been in liberating us from stereotypes and ignorance. We've moved from you or me, to you and me, to you are me, which is the most profound expression of equality. And now we have to do the same thing for being autistic. Autistic pride is one of the ways that we can do that. Doing the dishes and mowing the lawn where other people can see us being autistic is another. There's one message that I give to anyone who has recently discovered that they're autistic. Welcome to your tribe. The day that you realise you are autistic is one of the greatest days of your life. You don't have to pretend anymore and you get to not get the joke. Because they're not actually that funny. There's a great video of Will Wheaton, um, who is an actor on Star Trek. Uh, who was asked to record a message about being a nerd for a fan's child. Um, you can find it on YouTube, uh, just Google it. It's really worth watching in full. Um, but there's a bit that I particularly liked that I think is quite powerful if you swap out the word nerd for autistic. Um, although, you know, practically speaking, they're largely the same thing for many people. So, there's going to be a thing in your life that you love. I don't know what it's going to be. It might be sports, or science, or reading, or telling stories. It doesn't matter what it is. The way you love that thing and how you find other people who love it the way you do is what makes being autistic awesome. Some of us love Game of Thrones while others love Star Trek or Star Wars. But we all love these things so much that we travel thousands of miles to be around people who love the things that we love the way that we love them. That's why being autistic is awesome. Don't let anyone tell you that the thing that you love is a thing that you can't love. Don't let anyone ever tell you you can't love that. That's not for you. You find the things that you love and you love them the most that you can. Autistic people have so much to give. We built the bridges, we put people in space, we made some of the best films that have ever been written. We do things differently and because we do them differently, we get to do them better. Humanity cannot exist without us fixing their printers and designing systems to keep them safe. I know few autistic people who, if asked a factual question they don't know the answer to, won't go off, find it out and come back with references and links to further information. All that information then gets stored away for the next person. Autistic people are dedicated to everything that we enjoy, including people. If we like you, you won't find a more devoted and faithful friend or lover. Tell us exactly what you want in plain language and you will probably get it. Now, having said all of this, I'm not going to pretend that life as an autistic person is endlessly fabulous and filled with legendary Pokemon, because it's not. We are a minority in a society that does not understand us, that has many people in it who hate us and would rather we didn't exist. We have some real problems, both physical and emotional, that we have to work on solutions to. We have a poorly understood neurology, 
that science is only just starting to look into. But all of that gets so much easier once you understand why you are the way you are and where you belong. It's easier to solve a problem together. I march in gay pride every year um, and someone once said to me, I don't really like the idea of parading down a street for people to look at me. I feel exposed. What I said to them and what I say to everyone who says this is, it's not for me, it's for the people watching. You don't know who is going to find you inspiring. Now, I'm Jewish um, and I always wear a kippah at Pride um, to broadcast that fact. Um, and the last time that I got to go in person, I heard someone in the crowd shout at their friend to come and look. Um, there was a Jewish woman marching in the Pride Parade uh, wearing a kippah. I think they took a photo. That's someone who now knows that LGBT Jews um, are happy and proud of who they are and don't see a contradiction between their religion and their sexuality. I don't know whether they were LGBT, I don't know whether they were Jewish, I don't know whether they were a gay Jew, but someone learned something that day. Pride is not for the people who organise it, it's for the people watching. To see people who are loud and proud and can, take, and can speak for themselves. Pride events show off the full spectrum of the community, who we are, what we can do, and how we live our lives. You can't keep imagining that all autistic people are children when you see an autistic adult. You can't feel like you're the only autistic person on earth if you attend an event where everyone is like you. It's so much harder to hate yourself for being autistic if you are surrounded by people who love it. That's why we have black pride, it's why we have gay pride, it's why we have mad pride, and it's why we have autistic pride. We can show that we love ourselves and that we understand each other, even if the world doesn't. My ability to sit here and give this speech looking as gay as I do, with the full legal rights that I have, without being arrested, fired from my job or pitied by my family, is directly down to decades of work of LGBT activists who wouldn't be pathologised, wouldn't be stopped from living their lives openly and wouldn't take no for an answer. That work continues around the world to liberate every queer, from every closet, and that's what we have to do next for the autistic community. So please, be yourself, own it, talk about it, make memes about it, prove that we are more than a collection of labels, that we are a community, that we are one people, and that we will not leave anyone behind. Come out, come out, wherever you are, and prove that you, as an alive and functioning autistic person, are revolutionary. One in 59 is not enough. Recruit, recruit, recruit. I'd like to finish with a poem that I wrote for a friend um, who had accepted that he was autistic after a, a long journey. Uh, this poem is written on the citizenship certificate of every citizen of the autistic empire. To regard the world as it is. To feel, hear, smell, taste, and see our surroundings with such intensity that sometimes it is unbearable. To take pleasure in simple things over and over again. To love deeply, loudly and silently. To insist on a logical, reasoned approach. To build better systems, from spaceships to squeezing toothpaste. To know that the way we think is not a deformed process, but another system altogether. To cherish fact, and share only the truth, to break silences and unquestioned traditions, to ask why, to face the rejection of those who hate that we do this. That we may not speak does not mean we have nothing to say. That we are different does not mean that we are less. That humanity cannot progress without having us on the journey. This is our world and it is yours. Happy Pride everyone and thank you very much for listening.